it in there. Uh, and we, then we may not have an opportunity to get to some of the safety equipment we need if we had to egress. And speaking of the uh, mid deck, that was the shot there. And now, of course, you mentioned the flight deck of George Zampa getting into his commander position on the left hand side of the, of the flight deck. That's quite a trick, also. He, uh, he's very good at it, but there's things you can hit switches you could bump and uh, they, they do a real good job of it but they practice uh, there's mock-ups in building nine out at JSC at Johnson and uh, they do this several times in their training to get him in his position yeah uh, the ASP Shane Kimbrough is in there and the number three uh, Mike Thompson uh, it takes two guys on the flight deck just because you got such tight quarters, one can reach one side of the seat, one can maybe get to the other, things like that. And ASP is an uh, astronaut support person. Correct, always, sorry. Always, uh, always, nope, 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 always, uh, always, we, have, always have an astronaut in that position. That's uh, always, always uh, astronaut's always number two. Hmm. See, it's kind of a two man process. Shane's down there below. And uh, he's kind of holding on to the comm cord so that it doesn't swing and inadvertently hits anything. And Mike's attempting to snap the helmet into place. And this is uh, George Zampka's second flight. The last time he did this was on the STS-120 mission back in 2007. He was... Uh, Actually, on the other side of the flight deck, he was on the uh, on the pilot side. Yeah, there. Shane laid his comm cord up there, and then Michael connected. So the commander will be on comm here shortly. And once that happens, the Commander will talk to uh, two locations. He'll talk uh, three different people with two different locations. Two here in the launch control center. And the orbiter test conductor, Roberta Wyrick. She'll be uh, confirming there's good audio communication with the uh, with the astronauts. Then uh, the NASA test director, Jeff Spalding, will talk to them. And they also talk to the mission control center in Houston. Good calm is a wonderful thing. <laughs> and mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the uh, insertion techs have several contingencies in case, uh, you know, they, they check the helmets and the cables and everything out in the suit room prior to leaving. But in case they run into a problem here, they're able to maybe swap a cable or a helmet out that uh, for some reason just didn't, calm just didn't come on. And that's one of the things that we were talking yesterday that uh, that you want to make sure you you're staying not only on the timeline but uh, give yourself a little bit of extra you know get it done sooner rather than later so in case something does come up you've got the opportunity to make a swap without uh, causing you to forfeit your opportunity to launch exactly we uh, we work very hard it's probably going to be doing a comm check or something CDR, come check. CDR, this is OTC. I've got you loud and clear, homie. OTC, CDR, have you loud and clear. Good morning, Roberta. Good morning, Bambo. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Bam. Copy. Confirming that uh, Nicholas Patrick knows. Heading to, heading to the uh, mid-deck. Right. Jim Kelly was telling us yesterday this is quite a, quite a juggling act to have all the flight suit and equipment on and then be able to position yourself up like that. Uh. It is. I've uh, actually got to experience that uh, in the mock-up in Houston, the little choreographed thing. What they have to do now that they're doing the pilots, so it's like reverse of what they did on the other side. 
Mm -hmm. Mirror image. Difference there between the two. Not only is obviously diff two different people he's talking to, but it's a... Uh, PLT Houston, we read you loud and clear. Good morning, Terry. 